he's a top, top class man. And um, I think he's enriched himself even more with this decision. You know, you don't want to piggyback off the back of Ralph being given this opportunity at Manchester United. He's been there 15 and a half years. Lisa, Louise, JC, his kids, his missus, Lisa. Great family, fantastic family. We do a bit of work with him uh, to do with his charity. He's got a foundation looking after kids and sport and in, in Manchester area in the North northeast. He's just, he's, listen, he's a top, top guy. I think it's the right decision, <laughs> stepping away. I think he needs to spend some time with the family and uh, hopefully we'll get out for a game of golf. And listen, once he's had a rest, recuperated, we don't want to lose someone like Michael Carrick. So what about, what, what about United then, uh, where Ralph? What, what happens next? Um, has he got someone in mind to take over? Or is, is he going to oversee? Or is he going to be hands-on? You know, it's all sort of in the dark at the moment. I think he'll be hands-on to start with, um, to execute uh, the plan, which is to change the way Manchester United play and give them a, an actual... Uh, DNA of how to play and how to press. He's, he's obviously going to stick to his own philosophies. So it's going to be very similar to, to the way Thomas Tuchel and, and, and uh, Jurgen Klopp get their team to press high. But when you talk about pressing, it's not just the forwards and the midfielders, it's the defenders, it's the goalkeeper. And I think there's going to be a few players within <clears> the Manchester United setup that might struggle to um, make that adjustment to, to, to a high pressing team. So it's going to be really interesting to see how Ralph goes about his business and what his recruitment's like, not just on the field, but also his coaching. Ali? Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Uh, I, I don't see a dramatic change, Trev, Al, because, I, I'm, you know, immediately, because I think what what um, what Trev's saying, I think we all agree, but I, that's not going to happen. I don't think that's going to happen overnight, particularly <laughs> mid-season. Mid um, it'll take a while. Um, the challenge United have got is can they finish fourth? I think uh, looking yeah. at it, um, I, Arsenal have, have done ever so well since their poor start. They're sitting fifth yesterday. I didn't think it was an awful lot in the game last night. I thought actually Arsenal was slightly better first half. Um, and United, when you've got somebody like Ronaldo in your team, you've always got a chance, and that proved to be the case. In, in wow. Absolutely incredible, Trev. In well, Ali, just yeah. before we move on, because I want to talk about last night's game, but Trev, just uh, of course, Arsenal, they go to Goodison next. And I see in the paper today, uh, I think it's the Sun. Benitez backup Rafa received the dreaded vote of confidence by Mashiri, despite <laughs> things going from bad to worse. Uh, does Rafa see it out, or is he out before Christmas? Well, I think it's easy out because a lot of what he's having to deal with is not his fault. You know, it's the yeah. recruitment over the last four or five years. I think net spend, they spent £85 million more than Liverpool. So when you look at what he spent uh, or what the club spent and what the quality is on the pitch compared to what Liverpool have spent and what the, their quality is, they're sitting in the top three. They've won a Champions League. They've won the Premier League. I mean, chalk and cheese. Liverpool. I mean, most teams, I have to say, in the Premier League, if not all would come second best to the way that uh, Liverpool have dealt with their yeah. economic uh, setup and their football business because they sell players at top dollar and they, they nick a few <coughs> players at quite cheap. So I think they've been brilliant, Liverpool, the way they've gone about it. Um, they've been really savvy with the business that they've done, bringing players in. Uh, but yeah, Everton, they'll stick by Rafa because I don't think they've got many other choices and they need a strong character um, who can deal with these players and hopefully they can get a couple of loanies in. But Dominic Calvert-Lewin... You know, he's, he's a linchpin for them. He's yeah. so important. And when they've not got him, they don't score goals. And that will then go through the team and they'll lack confidence. And that's exactly what we're seeing. Who finishes fourth then? Teddy Sheringham thought West, West Ham, Ham can do it. Yeah, I think West Ham. I think you look at the quality. So they might, the, be, they might beat Chelsea at the weekend? Possibly. You know, listen, the, the players have had a bit of a dip. We, we, we understand that. Uh, obviously, Europa League, they've had to qualify for that. Done brilliant in there. They've started the season really well. They're, they've not got a massive squad. I think uh, you have to say David Moyes is rotating really well. But I look at the quality of that squad. I look at the quality of the, the backup players. Um, and what they can, you know, if, you're, if you've got a team and you're struggling to break a, a, a the opposition down, you look on your bench and what have you got? And I think West Ham look really strong. So for me, I'd go for West Ham. I think they can get a result this weekend. There's a, a lot of rivalry from when Frank left West Ham to go to um, Chelsea. And there's a few things said in the media about, you know, that we've helped pay for the stadium and, and all this, that and the other. So... Yeah, there was no love lost there. I think that's that's been uh, that stayed the same. And um, you know, at London Stadium, sixty thousand fans in there, massive atmosphere. I think the West Ham players have got the ability to lift themselves, 
and maybe pull up a pull up a little surprise in the result there. I've got to see you, Trevor. I mean, the, the title race itself is going to be one of the most exciting years. Mm. Absolutely magic. The three teams that are, you know, Ch Chelsea, City, and, and Liverpool are out of this world. It's as strong a title race as I, as I can remember in a oh, long, yeah, long I still, time. I still but equally. City. Well, but equally, when you think about it, we're going to have some fight for fourth place. Well, Liverpool yeah. are Arsenal, 72. Uh, did someone tell me Liverpool are 72 41? They've got to be the value. Yeah, because I don't yeah. think there's a lot between the teams. No, exactly. No. I mean, looking at the teams, I mean, obviously Liverpool, you know, they've scored a lot of goals. Oh. Um, they look sensational going forward. But I think the best footballing team is Manchester City for I'd, me. I, I'd agree. Do you know, yeah, who, Fred, yeah. do you know who was unbelievable the other night? I mean, unbelievable. Jordan Henderson. Yeah, brilliant. Oh, I was yeah, sent, I was sent to Big Al. I had a good look at him. And we always knew he's a good player, right? And he is, he's mm. a terrific player. But I couldn't believe his game savvy and his speed of his mm. feet as well. You know, yeah. it just seemed... I think Kenny bought him, by the way. Talk Sport Breakfast with Alan Brazil. Thursday and Friday morning, 6 till 10. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.